Well, the U.S. economy may be growing, but high inflation coupled with spiking interest rates have been weighing down consumers. The consensus of financial experts is that inflation likely rose in July for the first time in 12 months, driven higher by more expensive gasoline, and hints that the fight against rising prices may prove more difficult in the months ahead. Inflation is our big story today. Today's report shows that consumer prices rose 3.2 percent from a year earlier. That was up from a 3 percent annual rise in June, which was the lowest rate in more than two years. Today's price data will be among the key factors that the Fed will weigh in on deciding whether to continue raising those interest rates. And it's been nearly two years of elevated inflation here in the U.S. There are now new reports showing just how much it's affected households across the country. The Federal Reserve Bank of New York says Americans' credit card debt passed the one trillion dollar mark for the first time during the second quarter of this year. Overall household debt, which also includes mortgages, auto loans, and student loans, has climbed $2.9 trillion since the end of 2019, before the pandemic. And higher interest rates, the Federal Reserve's key tool to curb inflation, will make it harder to pay down those debts. When interest rates rise, the debt that people hold gets more and more expensive and that's certainly playing a role along with inflation and a few other things. Meanwhile, a second report from Bank of America found a surge in the number of Americans making emergency withdrawals from their 401k accounts, potentially another sign that households are struggling to keep up. So even though inflation has declined in the last year, many people are still struggling with bills and debt. So we asked, is your household still feeling the sting of inflation? 88% answering our online poll saying yes. Well, 12% said no. And you still have a chance to weigh in. Let us know. All you have to do is head over to 13abc.com to vote. A new consumer credit report shows Americans' credit card debt is at a record level. So what can you do if you're struggling to pay off that debt? The experts are sharing tips to help you get back on track. Americans' borrowing habits reaching a historic milestone. For the first time ever, credit card debt levels have surpassed $1 trillion. That's according to data released Tuesday by the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. What we're seeing here is more people carrying more debt. The New York Fed says credit card balances are at a record high for longer periods of time. Meanwhile, a new bank rate survey finds 47% of U.S. credit card holders are currently carrying credit card debt month to month. It comes as interest rates have soared to levels not seen in over two decades. The average credit card charges about 20 and a half percent. So there are definitely some worrisome signs there. Ted Rossman, senior analyst at Bankrate.com, has three tips for people holding a lot of credit card debt. One, try the avalanche method. List your debts from the highest to lowest interest rate, make the minimum monthly payment on each, and then invest all your extra cash toward paying off the highest interest debt. Repeat until you've paid all your debts down. Two, consider a zero balance transfer credit card. It allows you to transfer your existing high cost debt over to a new card and pauses the interest clock for up to 21 months. For those 21 months, the ability to avoid interest is really powerful. That could save you hundreds maybe thousands of dollars, depending on how much you owe. And three, get your spending under control. Bankrate suggests focusing on basic necessities and obligations and delaying major purchases like cars. For Consumer Watch, I'm Cole Higgins. Global food prices have tumbled since July of last year when Russia and Ukraine signed a deal to allow the safe passage of ships carrying food and fertilizers from the Black Sea ports to the world market. But Moscow pulled out of that pact last month. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations said last week that its global food price index rose in July compared with the month prior notching only the second increase since July of 2022. So inflation in consumer food prices remains high. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, grocery bills jumped 0.3% last month. One of the main culprits for that price hike, beef. It went up an average of 2.4%. Beef roast spiked 6.5%, while ground beef only went up 1.5%. The drought conditions forced a lot of those ranchers to sell their cattle quickly, more quickly than usual, and feed is also more expensive right now. And one bit of positive news here, Tyson reports prices for pork and chicken actually went down last quarter, and data shows that eggs, beer, 
and dairy prices all declined as well. Wages are a major factor in inflation. Service businesses like restaurants, hotels, and entertainment venues have wages representing a substantial share of costs. Worker shortages have led many of these service companies to sharply raise pay. Last week, the Labor Department reported that our average hourly wages rose 4.4% in July from a year earlier, more than expected. So to cover their high labor costs, companies have typically raised their prices, thereby fueling inflation. And today's price data shows that energy costs rose 0.1% over the last year. Electricity prices are down, and so are gas prices compared to last year. Drivers across the country seeing declines this summer as well. But that trend's over. Prices at the pump have seen a sharp increase in the past month, and that could drive up the cost of other goods. Michigan drivers are seeing prices increase at the pump to their highest levels of the year. They just went up again here in Toledo this week as well. Let's bring in the foremost expert on pump prices, Patrick Tahan from GasBuddy.com. Patrick, uh, here as we stand on August 10th, prices a little bit higher than they were on July 10th. Yeah, quite a bit higher than they were a month ago. In fact, the national average about 30 cents higher in the last month, a penny per day. But prices still in most places of the country are about 15 cents below what they were a year ago. Indeed, that's also true in Ohio, the statewide average down about nine cents from last year. But some states are starting to see year on year increases. We're seeing some increases in, in parts of Michigan to $3.99 today as well. Is it possible we hit a $4 national average uh, or is, is this about as, as rough as we'll get? Well, we certainly could hit $4, especially if we're exacerbated by Mother Nature. If we see a major hurricane entering the Gulf of Mexico, that certainly would be bad news for gasoline prices as it could impair and cause damage at some of the largest refineries. So. Um, you know, I don't know that we'll hit $4 unless we get one of those exceptional events, but we're certainly just on the doorstep, so it is very possible. Walk us through uh, diesel as well. We've seen some increases in diesel, and it, it, at least here in Northwest Ohio, there was a time when diesel and gas were almost neck and neck, but you remember a year ago, it was astronomically higher for diesel. Well, diesel prices really bottomed out a month ago, and if anything's going up faster than gasoline right now, it's diesel. The national average for diesel's back above the $4 gallon mark almost 419 a gallon now that's a pretty hefty 45 cent increase compared to the bottom when prices were about 380 so uh, a lot of that on good news about the economy with freight potentially bouncing back there's going to be more demand for diesel meanwhile inventories of diesel what we call distillate fuels are almost 20 percent below the five-year average so supply is rather tight and that's why diesel prices are likely to continue going up, especially as demand goes up for agriculture as farmers uh, get those crops harvested. In addition, if demand does bounce back for logistics, uh, that's going to put more pressure on, on uh, diesel. In addition, heating oil, which is used in the Northeast, is also the same as diesel. So as we get closer to colder weather when heating oil is needed, we're going to see more demand and thus higher prices. Get us caught up to speed on what's happening with OPEC and with Saudi Arabia. I'm sure some people have seen headlines about what's happening, cutting production uh, or whatnot. For people who don't follow it closely, give us the elevator summary about what's happening overseas and how that is impacting things here in the U.S. Well, um, you know, during June, when oil prices were in the mid-60s, the Saudis grew kind of restless, seeing oil prices well below what their budget requires. Uh, and so the Saudis kind of went at it alone and cut oil production by a significant million barrels a day. That's over 10 percent of their country's production. And being one of the world's largest oil producers, when you see a big cut like that, it certainly means less oil in the global markets and it sends oil prices up, which is exactly what the Saudis want. In addition, now they've also convinced the Russians to cut oil exports. Those are the number two and number three largest oil producers in the world behind the United States. And when they act together to cut production, it's going to send prices higher. Patrick Tahan from Gas Buddy. We appreciate the time as always, sir. Thank you very much. My pleasure. And just a reminder, you can watch the full big story on the 13 ABC News app. It is available as a free download in your app store. You can also scan the QR code on your screen.